This is one of those videos that we end up making almost entirely by accident. Meet the Alexa 35. On Ari's website, they brag that most big productions are shot on Ari. I'm not gonna lie, I have a hard time figuring out exactly how this fits in Ari's lineup. You've got the 35, which is a 70, thousand dollar camera and that's before you buy any kind of rig for it a follow focus a flipping lens or a power distribution unit it costs four thousand dollars less than the mini lf which uses their old sensor technology but the mini lf is not going away and in fact may still continue to be used for years to come yes for a while probably <laughs> yeah but why because Ari sensors are still the best and they've been using basically the same sensor for 13 years or sensors. So here's the thing. With the Alexa 35, we get one of their brand new sensor whose speeds and feeds include things like 17 stops of dynamic range, which is basically the difference between the highest highlight and the lowest low light that you can capture and then recover detail from when you're working on your production. It's Super 35, which is very standard for cinema cameras. It's got a 4.6K sensor up from 3.4. Netflix certification. Exactly. And it's got better color science using the latest Ari Reveal. And you can see on this chart that it has better red reproduction. And that would be really important for things like skin tones, for yes. example, because there's a lot of blood under skin. <laughs> <laughs> We're very pink. None of which answers my questions about why we would continue to use the rest of Ari's lineup when this has a higher resolution sensor with better dynamic range and better color science. And that's where things get really tricky and magical so we brought along a Mini LF. Yes. This uses the old sensor. It costs $4,000 more, and that's because it uses two of the old sensor. So instead of being like this, they take it, they go like this, and they put two of them, and their top tier camera actually uses- Three of them. And that gives us the equivalent of, you were saying about IMAX? Uh, just a little bit less. So IMAX is 70 mil, this is 65, but it's even not really quite 65. It's about 6K resolution. So who is this actually for then? Because if I'm shooting a feature, I'm shooting on an Alexa 65 mm -hmm. with, with the three sensors, which is rental only, by the way. You cannot even buy them. I can't quote you a price. But then if I'm shooting a documentary or something, I want the compactness of the mini, especially because I've got two of those old sensors, so the image quality should be like pretty similar. Are you asking why I would use the 35 over the mini? Yes. Or the, uh, but new sensor and better color science. Is the I.O. similar or it's does it have? Very, very similar. Okay, so you've got Ethernet, which is for metadata for virtual productions. If you're shooting something like The Mandalorian, you might want to get data off of the camera in real time while you're shooting. Uh, they've got, huh, okay, audio in. You would not typically use the audio in on a camera like this, other than maybe documentary. Maybe documentary. Even then, you'd have a sound guy. And you got a baller documentary if you're shooting on something like this, and yet you don't have a sound guy. Uh, yeah. So scratch audio, essentially. It, oh, it also has scratch audio mics in the front. But hey, you brought up a really good point. You could be a hundred feet away from your subject with a camera like this. <laughs> Those aren't going to do anything to help you sync up. Speaking of syncing, you've got time code as well as sync in. So this works more on pulses and time code allows you to kind of like, you know, before the mission, you set your watches and then ensure that all of your footage is perfectly synchronized for the editor. You've got 12 volt power out. This is very, very limited. Really, you're gonna want an add-on part like this. Yeah, just like red. Remember that unboxing a while back when I bought the reds and then realized, that was like a third of the total cost of the <laughs> ecosystem. <laughs> Ari's got you there too. So this guy will do 24 volt out to six different peripheral devices, whether it's that aforementioned audio module or, I mean, what else would you run? Uh, external displays. You, oh, you can connect tons of displays to this thing. So you've got the built-in electronic viewfinder, you've got the built-in display, and then you can do two more SDI displays for all the yep. various stakeholders who might want to be watching what the operator is shooting. This is cool. You also have an SDI in. So if I, the operator of this camera, wanted to have a little picture in picture of what someone else is shooting on a B cam, I could totally do that too. And I guess, if we were to summarize why this, it comes down to versatility? When you hit this level of production, resolution isn't king. Uh, it really comes down to... When I Sacrilege. Bring this... <laughs> um, in, in fact, when you get to too high of a resolution, it can counter... 
is counterproductive in terms of image quality. We right. experience that just with, like when you go over 24 frames per second. Yeah, exactly. Uh, please drop the frame rate of this video down to 24, maybe 12. Are Let's we shooting 12. at 24? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't even surprise me with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to why resolution can actually be detrimental mm -hmm. to image quality. When you think about it, the higher resolution, the smaller each photo site is. Right, because uh, there's a limit to how big you can make the sensor. Exactly. Theoretically, you could manufacture a sensor that's this big, and your yields might be one out of every 100,000 that you try to fab. And there would be no lenses made for that size. So that's actually one of the reasons you would choose the 35 over the mini, is this is a larger sensor, so lens compatibility is less good. There's a ton of lenses that can work with this, but if you go back decades, Super 35 is much more standard. Right, so there's more to lens compatibility than just the mount. I guess this is a good opportunity for us to talk about the LPL lens mount. Now, I have never taken off or put on a PL lens support. before. Oh, oh, okay, you need support, I guess. Yeah, 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 well, go you, for these it. These are heavy lenses, you this, don't wanna just like. This is a $20,000 lens, so, so I don't like... wanna mess it up, okay. $28,000 lens? It doesn't even zoom! It has no features! Where's my features? <laughs> So this okay, one. so I just I just rip it out now. No, uh, well, have you have you un undone it? I think so. It is moving. Okay. I just, okay. Wait, oh my jeez. Hold on. I okay. So we have to. So you got an alignment line, looks a little something like that. You've got the do not get dirty part. You've got the especially super duper do not get dirty part, and then you basically put the line on the thing. Mm -hmm. There's a little arrow. It's right there, right? Yeah, but are you you you're. Well, wait. What the? Well, where does the line go? The line goes sent top. That's stupid. <laughs> Why wouldn't the line align with the arrow? Because you know that top is top. I don't know. Well, why is there an arrow? I this is an RE lens on an RE camera. There's no excuse. You did it. You're a, you're a first AC now. <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah, I guess that's feels really secure. It's very secure. A lot of PL lenses are very, very heavy, and so the kind of mounting that's on, you know, an EF or an E especially, right. it would just rip it off. <laughs> so that's... You could potentially put rods and lens support, but this is a much more robust system. And it's more robust-er, because Ari doesn't use a regular PL mount, they actually use an LPL, or a large PL mount. So in order to mount a PL mount lens, you actually have to adapt this bigger one to this smaller one. So you've got a PL in your PL, so you can put a PL lens in your expensive camera. <laughs> yeah, and they do make adapters for EF and L lenses, and so you do have choices, which is really nice. And theoretically, you could do EF to E if you really wanted to, but if you're using these cameras, please use good lenses. This not seems Sony like a lenses. lot of yik yak without actually turning the thing on. Wait, we're supposed to use these? I'm not. I don't <laughs> want to break it or anything, but because of course they do, Ari uses their own proprietary media that they confusingly call Codex. Oh, really? I didn't even think about that. That's so confusing. That is so stupid. Codex has a meaning. It's the plural of codec, which is the format in which the media is encoded. There is RE raw internally, um, but there is no compressed raw. Red has a stranglehold on that. So what is it, like a patent thing? It's a patent thing. So you can do nice. internal raw, but it has to be uncompressed. And then there's ProRes, a bunch of different formats that are compressed right. ProRes. But you would never shoot compressed in a camera like this, would you, really? You, you would, because ProRes still has a ton of latitude. If you're doing like a feature and it's a big budget thing, no. You're doing raw and you have a dit and you're offloading the footage and then maybe compressing it in post. Because you can do it there. Explain what you mean by latitude. Latitude is basically everything that extends beyond what you can see in the image. Got it. So when you're shooting, it, shooting an image, something might look overexposed, but on a camera like this, everything above that line can actually be recovered. And if I Not shoot everything. in raw, I might have more headroom there to recover something that was either overexposed or underexposed. Exactly. It's storing more information, uh, whereas a compressed format would you know, compress that format and lose some of that information to play with. But ProRes is still pretty good. That's why people were so excited when Apple added the ability to record ProRes internally on the iPhone. Okay, I did actually want to put some media in it at some point here, but one of the features that really jumped off the page to me was the ability to digitally add film noise the in the shot. Yeah. So that basically you're ruining the cleanness of your image right from the get-go. How does that make any sense? Please, please explain that to me. Essentially, 
you will always have grain and noise in your image. No matter how good your sensor is, no matter how much light there is, there's gonna be some level of grain. What Ari's allowing you to do with their textures feature is choose the characteristics of the grain. So you can choose you know, something that's a little coarser, something that's a little softer. Um, you can actually look on their website and see like they have 20 different- I hate it. It's, I hear what you're saying, but it's actually kind of cool because it's part of the image processing pipeline it would just be baked in there. And it is baked in on every camera ever. There's always grain, but now you get to choose the details of that grain. Let's pull it apart. I kind of want to. I don't think Ari would be very happy. Pretty much guarantee you it's just a basic ass SSD in an enclosure. How easily would it come apart? Oh, look at that. The answer is pretty easily. There's an RE rep somewhere that's just like sweating bullets now. They're like, well, they knew who they sent it to. <laughs> they loaned us these, by the way, just to kind of play around with. I don't think they realistically thought we were ever gonna switch to them for our workflow. We learned our lesson. Well, one of the things that's really interesting is that Ari's had such a stranglehold on the high-end market, but when Sony introduced the Venice, they started to be much more competitive. There's a lot more shows that are starting to use Sony. Their big strength is that you don't need as much lights. Their low light performance so good. is incredible. And I mean, there was a big budget sci-fi movie, The Creator, shot on an FX3. They use other cameras too, like it's not just FX3. But Sony's, that's not even their best sensor. The Venice has a better sensor, the FX9 has a better sensor. And it, the FX3 costs like a tenth of what this costs. Mm -hmm. So what is Ari that's trying to sort of dip their toe into the you know budget creator space, kind of get some attention, or what, what was the point of this? I think they're just trying to maybe kind of catch the eyes of people like us, but maybe focus more on you know cinematic qualities in their videos, and they're trying to grow their market uh, to people that have previously not seen Ari cameras as accessible. Well, they are still not accessible. <laughs> Got some work to do, boys. In all seriousness though, the difference in performance is very noticeable and our team prepared some test footage for us to compare the Ari picture to what you can get off of even a very expensive, this is a professional camera. That's an FX6. That is for professionals. Yep. Now let's talk about our sponsor. We partnered up with the folks over at Jukebox to spin up this one of a kind LTT floppy disk sticker designed by our very own Sarah, and you can get one 100% free. Jukebox makes designing your own custom stickers easy. They're great for office parties, promotional material, or just having around for fun. And look at this cute, adorable packaging. We even use them for some of our printing needs, so you know the quality is top notch. You can head over to the link below and use code Linus for 30% off any custom stickers, and Jukebox will throw in one of our floppy disk stickers for free. I believe these are actually writable too. Okay. Don't worry, I got this. Yeah. Sup, Glenn? How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Nice camera, poor man. <laughs> okay, well this is cool. Actually, can you stand right in front of that light? Because that is wild. Even without me having any idea how to use this at all, I can shoot straight into our lights and see every little detail in the ripple of the diffusion layer. And again, without adjustment, I can see a ton of detail in even the shadows under his arm by his like weightlifter belt thing here. That is freaking crazy. Yeah, I think even talking about the UI, I really appreciate a camera that has a well-designed touchscreen interface. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that, you know, it's all knobs and stuff, and I still want that kind of control. Look. But uh, when I first used this camera, it was pretty easy to figure out where everything was. Uh, we've used red, I've used, we've used black magic, um, and this is significantly better than the red interface. That interface sucks. Oh, and it's got a little readout here so you can see exactly what everything's set to when you are just using this to look at what the heck you're doing. Uh, I don't know what this does. Oh, delete? You can delete shutter angles? I doubt you can delete, it says delete. some of the main ones. Let's, do you wanna try? I deleted 180 oh! degrees. We're never going back. <laughs> it's never coming back. I can add it. Yes. I always appreciate that there's a focus magnification and a false color button here as well. Oh yeah, you should explain what false color is. Basically what false color does is it takes different exposures in the image and assigns it a color to show you how bright or how dark it is. It'll tell you, and this camera even includes a nice little cheat sheet because it's hard to remember the exact uh, colors all the time in my brain. Uh, but it'll inform you when you're approaching 
you know, crushing your whites and blacks, which is something you generally don't want to do when you're shooting. When you're in post and you're color correcting, you might, you know, crush the blacks a little bit, but you want to get all the information into the camera, into that footage so you can play with it. Leave that to the editor. Yes. Don't be making that decision in the camera, yeah. if you can avoid it. Starting at the bottom, we have our purple, which is our noise floor. Anything in the purple is just going to be crushed, ugly, just noise. Um, once you hit blue, uh, then we're at the edge of shadow detail. So that's the absolute bottom of the exposure that you want to you want to play around with. Then we get green, uh, which is uh, at 18% gray. And then you can go past that. It'll show you how exposed something is as you're approaching clipping. Uh, and again, you just want to make sure that you're not clipping your image because then they can't recover it. Uh, even though it would be really hard to clip on this camera, you'd kind of have to try. So they use B-mount batteries, which are better because they're harder to accidentally pop off, basically. Yeah, V-mount is the most common. As the lock wears, it's not uncommon that as you rest on your shoulder, it just kind of pops out. And that can be catastrophic in the middle of a shot. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's look at the footage. Oh, it's a blind test. Yeah, we do. I was gonna ask if we could do a blind test. Heck yeah, we can. Okay. You can thank Hoffman for that. I think that one's the Alexa. This one? The yes. one that's not totally messed up color? Yeah, that one's bad. Uh, it's not, we're not on the right test right now. Okay, cool. Is that an Alexa shot though? This is an Alexa ah, shot. Okay, good. So you can tell, we should switch over to Aria. Ah, uh, that's not what I said. That's, you heard it here first, folks. That's not what I said. <laughs> I'm actually blind as well. I don't know which one is which. Back to what David was saying about there being more to perceived image quality than the number of pixels. Um, one of the things that stands out about this is just how sharp the images, and that's gonna come down to the combination of the sensor and also the lens. I'm assuming we didn't use the same lens on each of the cameras, and you can just see there's no aberration. There's just so much detail in these edges here. Uh, there's just absolutely no way that this is the Sony. I mean, it is my it? belief that this is the Ari. I mean, even look, you can see in the black swatch, there's just yeah, so, so much, more much more detail. See, I'm interested in the way that the highlight roll off is happening in this. I maintain this is the Ari. I'm gonna say it's really hard. The The focus is a little bit off on this, so it's hard to know. I'm gonna go say that the softer one is the Ari based on the highlights. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I do like the way the color is on the, uh, the second one. Uh, you so know what? Shoot, David, I think you're right. They Crap. both look very good. So no, it, you're it right, hard. you're right. You've gotta be right. Because this was set at the same exposure, same T-stop, because I was even using a cine lens on the Sony. So okay, then, yeah, you're probably right. So, uh, which one is Ari? This one is Sony. Oh, okay, so I was right. Wait. That's Ari? Yes, sir. Second oh, is Ari. okay, you were right. Nice. Okay, one. Okay, we might want to do oh, that. Oh, this is the Ari, though. Come on, there's no question. Oh, look, look at, at the, the shadows. Shirt, yeah. Look at the shadows on his neck. Yeah, I look at the right. detail in the shirt. the shirt. It's not even close. And okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little fuzzy or whatever. That is not the difference here. No, I don't think so. Yeah, we don't even need the slider. We don't need it at all. Yeah, that looks a lot better. <laughs> Especially this dramatic shot with the yeah. shading on the, yeah. You can see that better red sensitivity. Yeah. In the, in the, because the, Andy, He's rosy. He's a rosy boy. Wrong. What? Oh. <laughs> That's the Sony? <laughs> a lot of it comes down to grading too. Like you're gonna have an artistic vision and you're gonna do what you do with it and you can have a great image come out of a pretty basic camera and you can have a pretty crap image come out of even the finest of cameras <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. This is not a very scientific test. This was rough and tumble, very dirty. And so while the settings are matched, it's not a perfect example of That's what we would get. Day. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. This, this seems like we should be able to get it. I'm gonna let you go first this time. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, go for um, it. <laughs> I have very little confidence in whatever I answer I am going to give. I like the look of the first one more, but I think it does come down to settings and uh, lighting in this case. Uh, I'm gonna guess that the second is the Ari, but I have basically zero confidence. I think you're right. I'm just going with David's guess. Is that right? That is correct. That's okay. right, okay. So this one's a test of how the bokeh looks. Uh, I think the Sony is the second one. This is a more true red versus this having a bit of an orangey cast, but the noise is more pleasing on the second one. And mm. I know that Sony's low light performance is outstanding. I think that the second one's the Ari, but I'm not sure. Yes, you're right. 
Second Dang it. Yeah. I got it wrong? Okay. okay, balls. I think this just reinforces our point about the image out of the camera being very difficult to tell, and that's not necessarily the selling point of an Ari. It's the latitude you get in correcting the image after. So why don't we take a look at the timeline where we can play around with just the footage and you know see what you can recover, see what okay. you can play with. Wow. So you can see, <laughs> we've got everything down there. But you'd never really know that based on the original shot. We shot a bunch of demo footage on these cameras, by the way. We'll link some of it below, but the real purpose of all of this, and again, thanks to Ari for loaning us these cameras, was to shoot some high definition and HDR demo footage for us to put on TVs and on iPads and stuff like that. Um, that is our own that we don't have to license from someone else and yet have it be at peak cinematic quality. Yeah. Uh, pun intended, you know, peak bright, oh, brightness. Oh, I like to test it. The that's good, that's good. Anyway, okay, so then what can we get back near that sun? We can actually see <laughs> the circle of the sun. That's crazy. That is crazy to have that and also, you know, everything in here. Yeah. You know, everything in here and in, in all this subtle detail in his jacket that is directly backlit in his face. We're not getting one. Oh. Not even after this test? No. Not even after people subscribe to Short Circuit. 